This episode of Max Scoville Study Hall is brought to you by Jack Threads. Hey, we're back in Los Santos in honor of Grand Theft Auto V because that's a good enough excuse for me to talk about Beverly Hills Cop. Hey everybody and welcome back once again to another episode of Max Scoville Study Hall. I'm your host, Max Scoville, and Study Hall is the show where I take a particular video game and then run down a pile of recommendations of other pop culture media that would go along with it well. If you've been watching Study Hall since the beginning, you might recall that my very first episode was about Grand Theft Auto V as well. But it's a huge game and there's really a lot to say about it. And I'm, as I'm sure you're all aware, GTA V takes players back to the city of Los Santos, which for all intents and purposes is Los Angeles. Now, LA is famous for a lot of things, but it's probably most famous for being home to the motion picture industry. So I figured today I would talk about movies exclusively. Lethal Weapon is one of the best buddy cop action movies ever, and it happens to be set all over Los Angeles. If you've never seen the first one, you are missing out. Nowadays, parts of it might seem cliched. You got the two cops from the different walks of life forced to work together and getting tangled up in a big, important case, which results in them having some car chases, shooting some bad guys, and then becoming best friends in the process. The original Lethal Weapon is easily the best, and the second one holds up pretty well. And the third one's just kind of fun on the basis that you've gotten to know the characters. Plus, there's a scene where Danny Glover gets drunk and falls off a boat. My personal favorite buddy cop action comedy series, however, is Beverly Hills Cop. Eddie Murphy plays a fast-talking Detroit cop named Axel Foley, and after a friend of his gets killed, he trails the killers to Beverly Hills, where, spoiler alert, a black dude from Detroit sticks out like a sore thumb in the peak of 1980s decadence. This movie sounds terrible when I describe it, but it's really quite good. And since watching a young Eddie Murphy bullshit rich white people is entertaining, a sequel was made, which was directed by the late Tony Scott, and it is noticeably more slick than its predecessor. It's very well shot. I think Beverly Hills Cop 2 is actually my favorite in the series, and I was shocked to find out that headmaster Adam Sessler isn't a fan. I seriously thought everyone who liked buddy cop movies liked the first two movies, but apparently not. Beverly Hills Cop 3, meanwhile, pales in comparison to the first two, but George Lucas makes a totally random cameo as a guy in a hot air balloon. But hey, I'd rather watch a bad movie starring Axel Foley than a bad movie that doesn't star Axel Foley. Real talk, I've had arguments with my girlfriend about the idea of naming a kid Axel. The same. Next up is Speed, which, like Lethal Weapon, has been parodied and paid homage to so many times that parts of it might pack less of a punch for newcomers, but it was a totally fresh action movie when it came out. Dennis Hopper plays a mad bomber who's rigged an LA bus to blow up if it drops below 50 miles an hour, so it's got a haul ass around the LA freeway, which makes for a pretty good action movie, but it also kind of acts as sort of a tongue-in-cheek joke about LA, a city that's a lot more famous for its traffic than it is for its public transportation. The whole idea of a bus getting up to 50 miles an hour is ridiculous enough, but having it maintain that speed throughout Los Angeles, that's insanity. If you want a gritty-ass movie about gang warfare and police corruption, then Training Day is a must-see. The movie follows Ethan Hawke on his first day as a narc in South Central LA, working alongside his new boss, Denzel Washington, who's not exactly on the straight and narrow. Another crime movie to feature Ethan Hawke was Assault on Precinct 13, which is a remake of John Carpenter's 1976 cult classic. But I don't know why I said that. All of his movies are cult classics. Uh, in that movie, a group of cops are holed up inside a police station in South Central LA while the ruthless Street Thunder gang tries to break in. It's sort of like a zombie movie, and that's probably because Carpenter was actually inspired by George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. He just kind of replaced the zombies with criminals. The guy who wrote the Lethal Weapon movies, Shane Black, is mostly known for his work in the action movie genre. He just this summer directed Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man 3, but the first time the two of them worked together was in 2005's Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is more of a neo-noir detective mystery with an extremely funny streak. Talking about this movie doesn't do it justice, and in addition to Robert Downey Jr. being in top form and kind of making his comeback into Hollywood, Gay Perry might be my favorite character Val Kilmer has ever played. Oh my god, what is that? Oh, it's a word from our sponsor. Well, would you look at that? I can finally afford to be on a G6. On a G6. Gentlemen, nudity is all very well and good, but when you go outside, it's probably in your best interest to make sure you're wearing clothes. But hey, if you're stuck wearing clothes, why not try to look good? Oh yeah, that's right, because it's stupid expensive. Well, with Jack Threads, it doesn't have to be. Jack Threads is a members-only online shopping club for guys, offering up to 80% off retail on name-brand apparel, footwear, accessories, and more. Character customization is a big thing in GTA V, and it can be in real life too. Whether you're trying to look like a well-dressed former bank robber, a street-smart young hustler, or a backwoods hooligan, Jack Threads has the clothes to fit your style at prices that you won't have to rob a bank to afford. Normally, there's a waitlist to join, but I know people. 
So if you head to jackthreads.com slash study hall, you can start shopping today. It is free to join. There's no obligation to buy anything, and every sign up helps me support my private jet. <clears throat> I mean, show. Again, that is jackthreads.com slash study hall. I realize I'm slowly drifting away from the action-packed cops and robbers action fair that might be an easier sell for people stoked on GTA, but I have no doubt in my mind that a good chunk of Rockstar's latest outing will feature plenty of skewering of everyday Los Angeles culture, and there's certainly no shortage of movies that deal with that. Almost 20 years before Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Robert Downey Jr. rather famously starred in Less Than Zero as a young drug addict in Los Angeles, which his own personal life began to mimic in the following decade. Less Than Zero was loosely based on a novel of the same name by Brett Easton Ellis, author of American Psycho, who has a history of writing about screwed up, misanthropic individuals who just happen to live in Los Angeles. Another book of Brett Easton Ellis's that's been adapted into a movie is The Informers, based on a series of intertwined short stories that follow people from all walks of life in LA over the course of a week in 1983, including movie executives, rock stars, and even a vampire. Like a lot of Ellis's work, the book received mixed reviews, but the movie was pretty widely panned, probably because the vampire was left out of the adaptation. So if you like vampires, I don't know, maybe go read the book. More recently, Ellis teamed up with veteran writer slash director Paul Schrader to crowdfund their next project, The Canyons. Given that Ellis and Schrader are both known for focusing their work on some of the less flattering angles of modern society, it's fitting that The Canyons stars Lindsay Lohan as the cheating girlfriend of a trust funder movie producer played by porn star James Dean. I haven't seen it yet, but from what I've read, it sounds like a really well shot softcore porno about horrible people. Critics have been tearing it apart, but that's not unusual as far as Ellis and Schrader are concerned. In any case, it's probably the closest we're going to get to that Lindsay Lohan porno you were dreaming about back in 2004. Now, mature storytelling and character development is great and all, but if the Grand Theft Auto series is famous for one thing, it's the freedom to go on a destructive rampage with total disregard for the law. And if you want a movie about a man going on a rampage through Los Angeles, check out Falling Down. It's more of a social commentary-laden thriller than a full knockdown, drag-out action movie, but it's still really badass, and Michael Douglas unlocks new weapons like he's in a Metroidvania game. Anyway, Grand Theft Auto V is out in just two weeks, and it is torture waiting around, so hopefully some of these movies can keep you busy until then. If you've got some suggestions of your own, drop them in the comments. I have no idea what we're talking about next week, but tune in anyway, because I said so. Until next time, kids, remember, snitches get stitches. <laughs>